Hello everyone and welcome to this next bonus recording for DaVinci Resolve for Apple Color users. My name is Ben Brownlee and we're going to be looking a little bit further into the RGB mixer. Now I know we've already uh, touched on this quite a bit but uh, I want to go through and take uh, another few uh, interesting steps of, uh, of where we can go uh, with this. We're going to look at a few possibilities for the monochrome usage here. I know we looked at uh, turning stuff to monochrome uh, previously, but you know we're going to go in a bit more detail here. What we didn't do previously is turn off the preserve the luminance level switch here. What this lets us do is it lets us take things a little bit more extreme. So uh, we can actually really blow out the picture here if we're not careful and bring everything back. So this gives us the sort of full control and access to uh, to the entire uh, range of the pitch that we didn't have before. So we can, you know, actually quite interesting effect we can do if we take the blue all the way out and try and compensate with the other channels. And if these roughly add up to about 100 at the end of it, then we'll, uh, you know, then we're in a, a decent enough shape. But um, by turning on the preserve the luminance levels, what that does is it takes away all of those headaches for us. So um, we get the same basic idea of, of how the channels are going to be mixing without having to worry about, uh, you know, whether we're blowing stuff out or not. So we can concentrate really on, um, you know, um, are we going to be emphasizing skin tones uh, bright? Maybe we're going to emphasize them dark. You know, what are we going to be doing there without having to really worry too much about uh, keeping everything in the right sort of luminous level, which is great. And another thing about this is that, you know, once we've got this done, we can actually use the rest of our tools afterwards to give this a bit of a, if we need to give it a contrast bump or a, you know, bump in a certain area, we do have that control still uh, using our custom curves or, you know, any of the other primaries that we're working on. Let's reset this. What we can also do, if I just add a uh, another serial node here, is we can use this as a fun way or an easy way of getting our little tritone sort of look, create a, uh, a nice old style sepia look there as well by playing around with our uh, lifting shadows and who doesn't like that. Uh, actually, you can keep your answers to yourself. Uh, let's just base memory all of that. And uh, what I want to do is do something a little bit different. So I'm going to add a layer mixer node here. So I've got my two correctors feeding into my layer mixer. And on node number two, I'm going to come into my RGB mixer, set this to monochrome, and let's play around with this. I'm going to take blue out of the equation completely, set that to zero, take green, take that minus something or other, and bring the red up until things start to pop a little bit. Cool. Now, once I'm happy with that, I can come into the composite mode, right click on my layer mixer, come to composite mode and set that to overlay. And what that is now giving me, let's turn the before and after, is it's giving me a really high contrast, high saturation look that's actually really difficult to get any other way uh, using the other tools because of the uh, you know the sheer amount of control that we have over this. So I can come in, I can play around with the, uh, the green here. So we'll take a look at the, the red shirt over here. If I'm not absolutely happy with what's going on with that one, I can mix that up or mix it down and it's working to my liking. So before and after, before and after. This could be a bit much. 
And if you think it's a bit much, well, that's easy enough to do. We come into our key and we can just dial back the gain on that until we're happy with where it's at. And this is really nice. I really, I love the uh, the sort of variety of effects that you can get here. You can get such a, a lovely um, crunchy look, like a really heavy crunchy look here. Uh, actually very easily and without affecting uh, too much of the other colors. Uh, and if you think at any point that it's gone a bit too much, let's add another, come to the layer mix, add another serial node at the end. Uh, so say for example, we've lost his, uh, some of the detail in his trousers here. Not to worry, we'll make sure our gain custom curves is turned off. And we can bring some of that back just by adjusting the Luma curve. And because of the floating point maths that are going on, or math if you prefer, but uh, yeah, because of the 32-bit floating point nature of that, we're able to at any point in the line, uh, you know, down down these uh, down this line here, to bring back any of these particular details that we've missed out. So it might come up just a little bit. I'm not going to take it too far because I like that crunchy look. That's off, and that's on. crunch up even more cool so we've got before and after now layer order really matters here um, let me just show what I mean so when it comes into the layer mixer it's vitally important that we get it uh, round you know one way rather than the other way so when so when layers come into the layer mixer it is actually important uh, where they come into because remember we start at the top and work our way down uh, let's just create a new version here uh, let's just have this as version 2 and all I'm going to do on this is just swap the order of these around so now this is my base layer and this is my secondary layer you see it really affects how um, actually really affects how the uh, the look is managed especially if we've got a couple of layers built in over the top So all things being equal, which are not here, hang on. So let's set that back to 8.3 on version 2. Point eight three. So all things being equal, just the layer order switched around. We've got a very different effect. And this could be, you know, this could actually be the look that you're wanting. Or at least the start of the look you're wanting. Come over here, maybe we can you know, add a bit of green into there. Take this a little bit more... Um, So it's a little bit more sort of green and uh, alienated. But you know, it's, it's where you want to, uh, where you want to start off with. So I'll be going for something high contrast, high saturation, or high contrast, low saturation that you can then build on. But that is of course your decision. But it all stems from this one thing of being able to use a layer mixer with 
out RGB mixer in monochrome. So I hope that's given you a few more uh, ideas and uh, I look forward to talking to you soon. All right, thanks for now. My name is Ben Brownlee, a Curious Turtle. And I'll see you again soon. Bye now.